Hi everyone, welcome to Curated by Becta's meal kit number 136 for February 16th to the 18th. Thanks so much for ordering this week and thanks for letting us be a part of a special celebration at home and especially happy Valentine's to those of you who are celebrating this weekend. Uh, we've got a terrific menu for you uh, this week. I think the chef color-coded the appetizer and I color-coded the wine to be in the Valentine's Day mood. We've got this beautiful risotto from Spain and we've got a lovely beet salad or soup to get things started. Um, so, uh, I might pause this video in between because there's a little bit of downtime, but let's get started. Um, I'm going to get my cast iron pan. If you don't have a cast iron pan yet, make sure to get one and I'm going to get it, uh, nice and hot. Um, a little bit of grapeseed oil. You can use any neutral oil, canola, grapeseed, vegetable oil. Um, and you want to get that nice and hot, uh, and cause that's where we're going to sear our, uh, beef short ribs. Now, these have been cooked sous vide already um, for quite some time, and I actually pulled them out myself uh, and put them in an ice bath uh, this morning, and uh, they're going to be delicious, not just because I helped finish them up. That's just the way things roll around Vecta, is that everyone sort of throws in to help. So you want to get a nice seasoning salt and pepper on there. Um, I've also tossed the uh, zucchini and the fennel, uh, you get a big mixing bowl, throw some olive oil, salt and pepper in there, give it a, a stir, and that goes in the oven on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, and it's going to be for 20 minutes. I've set an alarm, uh, a timer for 50, uh, 10 minutes, so I know when to throw in my runner beans. So I'm going to put those in right now. So the runner beans are going to go into my mixing bowl, which still has the olive oil and salt and pepper. I might add a little more seasoning. And let's see how our pan is doing. If you want to know how your, uh, if your oil is ready or not, you throw a little bit of water in there. If it pops, you know you're looking good. So we're going to sear these on both sides. Let's see what the chef says. Um, uh, and add one tablespoon of unsalted butter per portion, reducing the heat to low. Um, and he actually didn't tell me how long. So I'm going to go with his traditional uh, 90 seconds, 60 seconds, I'm sorry, per side until you get a nice little sear. You'll be able to know pretty quickly. You want that little bit of caramelizedness and then put them on both sides. And that's when we're going to turn the heat to low and put the butter in to, uh, to baste it. Um, I'm also going to turn on my soup. We're going to go high on the soup. We are going to go uh, medium on the carrot puree. And then I've got my sauce diab here warming up on low with a little spatula. Okay, we've got a nice sear on one side. Let's flip it over. Um, yeah, so the runner beans. So again, I've already got some olive oil and salt and pepper in there from when I tossed the veggies. I'm going to add a little bit more seasoning, but it's got some oil. And that is going to go in on the baking sheet when my timer tells me it is ready. Um, so yeah, let me tell you about this rosado. Um, it reminds me very much of a Provencal rosé, but one of those deep, heavier ones. And I was really looking for something on a pairing this week that goes with the sweetness of the beets, with the earthiness of the beets as well, and a little bit of the nuttiness from the hazelnuts. And that's where I stumbled upon this beautiful guy. It's like strawberries and mushrooms, if that sounds appealing, in a glass. Um, I'm a big fan. Okay, we're going good on the sear. I'll throw it back to the other side that's a little seared a little bit less. I'm gonna put this on low. Butter's going in, melt it down. I'm going to get my basting spoon. Because it's a cast iron pan, the uh, handle is going to get hot. Now the short ribs have been uh, cooked to beads, which really amounts to braising uh, slowly at 82 degrees for uh, 12 hours in this case. And so they are well cooked and is going to break down and be super tender. 
And so what we're really doing is just caramelizing the beef and warming it up. And so my soup is bubbling away there. I'm gonna turn that down in a second. Don't wanna stain my countertop. And now we're gonna throw this in the oven for 15 minutes or so, okay. <laughs> okay, so beets do stain things. So if you did what I did and bubbled it over, make sure to get a paper towel right away so the beet doesn't stain your countertop. No need for that. And we're gonna give it a little stir. I think I am gonna use a non-stick um, whisk, but you can use a spatula, but I've got both of my spatulas going on right now with the corn puree and the sauce diab. Uh, okay, so what are we gonna do next? So the soup is probably close to ready. Hey Google, off. There we go, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the beans on my baking sheet. So if you want, if you're a little OCD like me, you can turn the fennel over and zucchini over. If there's a little brown on one side but not the other, that'll help it cook a little bit better. There we are. And then take our beans, runner beans, and you can just spread them out there on the baking sheet with the parchment paper. Hey Google, set a timer for 10 minutes. All right. So the soup uh, is gonna be pretty easy. Why don't we start on dessert then? Let's see if I can drag this video out a little bit. I know I'm gonna cut it in the middle so that you guys don't have to watch me standing around waiting for our veggies and beef to be done. So we've got this delicious chocolate brownie with candy cherries and chantilly. The chantilly, by the way, leave in the fridge so you can get it uh, with nice peaks afterwards. So plating the brownie, top with cherries, and then dollop the chantilly beside. Mm. Cherries are my favorite. And this is very Valentine's Day-esque. So I really hope that some of you have, are celebrating with our menu this week. Push that off a little bit. Mm. Very nice. So chocolate brownie with the candy cherries and the Chantilly. Okay, we're getting close on our soup. First, let me give this all a stir. We're good, we're good, we're good. So I'm gonna cut this right now and I'm gonna come back in a few minutes when uh, we've got the short ribs ready to go. And we are back, thanks for the break. So what I've done is I've taken the short ribs out of the oven and put it on a resting rack. So just a cookie sheet on a baking sheet and that helps to get the air underneath and then the juices go back to the center, makes it super moist. What I'm also gonna do though, is keep that pan of the delicious butter and uh, beef juice in there and it's gonna stay warm. So just before I plate the short ribs, I'm just gonna run it back through the butter um, to get it warm and a little bit more moist. So why don't we go ahead and plate the soup. Just be careful pouring, because again, beet soup, it will stain things. Our son is at work tonight, which is probably a good thing because he does not like soup. He does like beets, he loves roasted beets, but doesn't love soup. Okay, now we're gonna garnish with the pickled red cabbage. I know that this is what the chef was doing when he thought about serving this dish for Valentine's Day weekend. And then we've got our candied, um, or toasted hazelnuts. That's gonna give a beautiful crunch and nuttiness to the soup. And then finally, our dill. 
I can't wait to check out if my pairing was a success. I think it will be, but hmm. looks beautiful. This one is even better. There's our roasted beet soup with the uh, hazelnuts and dill and pickled red cabbage. All right, let's get the main courses going on. All right, so uh, to plate, we're going to be the, doing the corn puree first. I'm doing this in a coop bowl, but you can do um, a plate, no problem. Whichever you prefer, but because it's a little saucy, I'm liking the idea of the coop. I'm just going to sort of run my spatula through in order to give it a little more linear immersion. And then the veggies are up next. Hey Google, turn your timer off. All right, now we take this. Oh yeah, where's our mixing bowl? Keep that mixing bowl around because we'll need it. So the fennel, the beans, and the zucchini are all gonna go in there. I'll cook the right amount of time. And we've got our arugula from the bag. And that gets tossed in there. Give some freshness. Give it a little spin. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. Finish it off because the arugula is not seasoned. And the worst thing is not having seasoned stuff. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of olive oil too. Just to make sure it's nice. There's a lot of veg in here. We may scale this back a little bit. There's a lot of veg here. Yep, I thought so. We'll make a little bit less. Um, yes, and as I was talking about, let's get the arugula off the spatulas. We've got our short ribs, and then we're gonna warm it up a little bit. And there's six sides of the short ribs. Might as well get them all with the butter. And by the way, I didn't talk about the red wine tonight. With this is a luscious Malbec from Argentina, from Mendoza, Septima. And we've uh, featured this wine before because we're big fans. And it's just, it's luscious and kind of meaty, just like your short ribs. I think this is going to be great. And then finally, make sure to turn off everything, is our sauce diab. And that's going to go on our short ribs. And you can do a little bit around the plate as well. It's a good looking dish. You know, there's extra sauce. Why let it go to waste? And I did the seasoning, so we're all set. Here's our lovely braised beef short rib with the roasted fennel, uh, the runner beans, the zucchini, the arugula, the corn puree, the sauce diab. You got a lot going on there. So I hope you love it. Thanks for ordering. Thanks for watching. And I really hope we get to cook and curate for you again very soon.